In the last video, we looked at what the principal angle is, angles in standard position, and what the related acute angle is and how you find that related acute angle for whatever angle that you have. And that will all be extremely important when we start evaluating primary trig ratios for angles between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. But first we got to learn about the unit circle. So here we have our unit circle. It's centered at the origin and it's a unit circle because the radius is one unit of measure. So we can identify these four points here. This point is just 1 and 0. The point at the top is 0 and 1. The point at the left is negative 1 and 0. And the point right at the bottom is 0 and negative 1. So those are four known coordinates. But what if I drew another point, and I'll pick the first quadrant here, and I'm going to call this point just AB. I don't exactly know what our number coordinates are, but let's just use A and B. So what is the distance from that point to the origin? Well, it should just be 1, right? Because our radius of the circle is 1 but we still don't know what the value of A is and what the value of B is. But if we drew a triangle here from that point down to our x-axis, well, this distance right here, that would be our A value, right? Well, it should be because A should be the x-coordinate. And this line, if you draw it vertically going down towards the x-axis, this would be our x-coordinate. So the measurement of this line at the bottom would just be A. And it's the same value as of our X coordinate. And what about our Y coordinate? Well, this B is just our Y coordinate. So that means if we drew a line towards the Y axis, well, this distance or this distance in our triangle, that's just B. And we've created an angle. So this line that we drew from the origin to our point AB, that would be the terminal arm. And this, from the x-axis to that terminal arm, that's our angle. So let's just call that theta. Now let's actually find the primary trig ratios for angle theta. So let's find the cos of theta. So we know the cos of any angle is just the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So if this is our angle, our adjacent side is A, and our hypotenuse is 1. So the cos of theta is A over 1. So the cos of theta is actually just equal to A. Now let's do sine of theta. So the sine of any angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So if this is our angle, the opposite side is just B, and our hypotenuse is 1. So the sine of theta is B over 1, otherwise known as just B. Okay, well this is actually pretty interesting, because isn't A just our x-coordinate? So what does that mean? Well, the cos of theta is just the same as our x-coordinate. And isn't just B our y-coordinate? So then that just means that the sine of theta is just equal to our y-coordinate. So if we draw any angle on our Cartesian plane and the terminal arm crosses through our unit circle, that point where it intersects that unit circle, that point AB, it's actually the same thing as the point cos theta and sine theta. And that's because the cosine of theta is equal to our x-coordinate and the sine of theta is our y-coordinate. And that's when we draw an angle on the unit circle. Now let's find out what tan theta is equal to. So we know that the tan of any angle is equal to the opposite angle over the adjacent angle. So in this case, this is just equal to B over A. But isn't B equal to something? Well, B is just equal to the sine of theta. And isn't just A equal to something? A is equal to the cos of theta. So tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. And didn't we actually just establish that in one of our other previous lessons? So yes, this holds true once again. Tan theta is just equal to the sine theta over cosine theta. 
And let's make this conclusion once again. So if we have our unit circle, any point x, y on that unit circle will have specific coordinates. We know that x is equal to cos of theta. So our x coordinate is always going to be cos of theta. And our y coordinate is equal to the sine of theta. So y is always equal to sine theta. We've already learned the exact ratios for the special angles 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. So what if we have the angle 30 degrees and this was on the unit circle, our hypotenuse is equal to 1, what would be the length of this bottom side here and this side on the right? Well, isn't the bottom length the same as our x-coordinate? Our x-coordinate is equal to the cosine of theta. So what's the cosine of 30 degrees? So think about our special triangles or even look back at your notes. We're looking for the cosine of 30 degrees and that's actually just equal to the square root of 3 over 2. And this length right here, isn't this just the same as our y-coordinate? Our y-coordinate is the sine of 30 degrees. So what's the sine of 30 degrees? Well, if you go back to your notes or think about your special triangles, our 30, 60, 90 triangle, the sine of 30 degrees is just 1 over 2. So those are the two measurements for these sides in this triangle. Now what about this next triangle? We have a 45 degree angle here. That also means that this angle at the top is 45 degrees if this angle is 90 degrees. So our bottom side, that's just our x coordinate, and we're looking for the cosine of 45 degrees. And thinking about our 45, 90 degree angle, the cosine of 45 degrees is just one over the square root of two. And then we have our vertical side here. Well, this is our y coordinate, and this is just the sine of 45 degrees. And the sine of 45 degrees is also one over the square root of two. So those are the missing side lengths in this triangle. This is a unit circle on the Cartesian plane. We're going to need this to help us find the exact values for trig ratios for angles in between zero degrees and 360 degrees. But first we gotta fill this thing out. So we need to start getting used to plotting angles on the Cartesian plane. So we start off with zero degrees. At the top, this is 90 degrees. On the left, this is 180 degrees, and at the bottom, this is 270 degrees. And back at zero, this is 360 degrees. And since this is the unit circle, we know that this point is one and zero. Point at the top is zero and one. At the left, this is negative one and zero. And at the bottom, this is zero and negative one. And all of these lines are going to represent our special angles. So starting with our first quadrant, this first angle is just 30 degrees. The second angle would be 45 degrees. And then our last angle here is 60 degrees. And in the other three quadrants, these angles that are formed from the other three lines are going to be the same angles that are formed with the x-axis. So these are related acute angles. These would all be 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees but that's not what the actual principal angles would be. So this angle right here, this is just 30 degrees away from 180 degrees. So you can just do 180 minus 30 degrees. So this is 150 degrees. The next one would be 180 minus 45 degrees. So that makes it 135 degrees. The next one is just 180 minus 60 degrees and that's just equal to 120 degrees. And in our next quadrant, you can just add these related acute angles to 180. So you can add 30 degrees, add 45 degrees, and add 60 degrees. So then you would just get, our first angle is 210 degrees, the second one is 225 degrees, and then the third one is just 240 degrees. And in our last quadrant, you can just take away these angle measurements from the full 360 degrees. So we're taking away 30 degrees, we're taking away 45 degrees, and then we're taking away 60 degrees. So that makes this 330 degrees. 360 minus 45 is 315 degrees, and 360 minus 60 is just 300 degrees. 
And those are just all our special angles in the unit circle. And now we need to find out what all of these coordinates are. And by now you should know that the coordinates of every point x, y is just the cosine of theta and sine of theta. And just for reference, tan is equal to sine over cos. So now we need to find the coordinates of every point that's identified on this unit circle. And we're going to start with quadrant 1. Since we've already found the exact values for the trig ratios for these three angles, you should be able to do this one on your own. So I want you to pause the video and try to find the coordinates x and y for these three angles. So you should have used cos theta and sine theta to find these coordinates. So the cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over the square root of 2, and that's the same for the sine of 45 degrees. And then the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 over 2, and then the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. So those are all the coordinates in the first quadrant. Now let's do the second quadrant. And we can use the same method to find the coordinates of all of these points we can just use our related acute angle. So this angle is 60 degrees, so we can still find the cosine of 60 degrees and the sine of 60 degrees. So the cosine of 60 degrees is one over two, and the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of three over two. And that's just like this one. But let's look at this for a moment. Where is this point actually located? Well, it's on the negative side of our x-axis, so our x should be negative. And it's on the positive side of our y-axis, so our y can stay positive. So then our actual point is negative 1 over 2 and root 3 over 2. So it's not exactly the same as the coordinates of angle 60 in our first quadrant. It's pretty close. It's almost the same. The only change was the fact that the x was negative because on this side in quadrant two, we're on the negative side of the x-axis. So that's going to be the same thing for our other two angles. So for 135 degrees, the related acute angle is 45 degrees. So we're still doing the cosine of 45 and then the sine of 45. So our coordinates would be one over the square root of two and one over the square root of two. But which one is negative? Well, our x has to be negative because we're on the negative side of our x-axis. And that's our coordinate. And what about our next angle, 150 degrees? Well, the related acute angle is 30 degrees. So the coordinates are going to be the same as the ones in our first quadrant for 30 degrees. So the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, and the sine of 30 degrees is 1 over 2. But remember, our x is negative because we're on the negative side of the x-axis. And let's move on to quadrant 3. So we are going to use our related acute angles. We have our 30 degree angle, our 45 degree angle, and our 60 degree angle. So I want you to try to find the coordinates of each point on your own. So I filled all of these out. I found the cosine and sine of the 30 degree angle, the 45 degree angle, and the 60 degree angle. And remember, these are just the related acute angles. So that's one way to do it. But we gotta look at where we are on the Cartesian plane. So we're on the negative side of our x-axis, so that means all of our x's need to be negative. So the first coordinate, the x-coordinate, they're all negative. But we're also on the negative side of our y-axis. So that means our y-coordinate also has to be negative. So that means it looks like the cosine of all of these angles is negative, and then the sine of all of these angles are also negative. And now I think you have the hang of it, so let's quickly do quadrant 4. Let's find all of the coordinates for the last three angles in quadrant 4. So here it is, but do any of these have to be negative? Well, we're on the positive side of our x-axis, so our x's can stay positive, but we are on the negative side of our y-axis. So all of these y-coordinates need to be negative. And there you have it. That's our unit circle, and you will need to become familiar with our unit circle because that's going to help us solve trig ratios for angles between 0 and 360 degrees. 
but there is one final rule that you do need to learn and it's called the cast rule. And it's just a rule that's going to help you remember which trig ratio is always positive in whichever quadrant. So we label it C-A-S-T, cast. Cosine is always positive in the fourth quadrant, that's where it starts. All of the trig ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Sine is always positive in the second quadrant, and tangent is always positive in the third quadrant. And it's always labeled like this. It starts in quadrant four with cosine and goes counterclockwise from there. And the cast rule is not just some made up thing. Let's actually explain it using our unit circle. So in quadrant four, let's start there with cosine. So our cosine, it should be positive. And looking at all of our X coordinates, they're all positive. The cosine of these angles were all positive. And our Y coordinates, well, these are all negative and these were just the sine of our angle. So they should be negative, that makes sense. And if you wanna think about tan, well, tan should be negative. Tan is equal to sine over cos. So if we take our negative sine over our positive cos, we're going to get a negative. So that holds true. And now let's go to our first quadrant. So the cast rule says that all trig ratios are positive. So looking at our x coordinates, these are all positive and those were the cosine of our angle and our y coordinates are also positive and that's the sine of our angle. And tan is just sine over cosine. Since we have a positive over a positive, tan is also positive. And in our second quadrant, the cast rule says that only sine should be positive well, looking at our x-coordinate, this was cosine, all of our x-coordinates were negative, and our sine, our y-coordinates, are positive. But let's look at tan. Tan is always sine over cos. Well, in this case, if we have a positive over negative, our tan ratios would be negative. So this holds true for the second quadrant. And finally, we have our third quadrant, and the cast rule says that the tan ratio is the only one that's going to be positive in this third quadrant. So looking at our coordinates here, our x's and y's, so cosine and our sine of our angle, they're all negative. So that means tan should be positive, because if we have sine over cos, a negative over a negative, we're going to get a positive. So the tan ratio is always positive in the third quadrant. And there you have it, that's the unit circle and the cast rule. For some people, I know it's a lot to take in all at once, so you might have to rewatch the whole thing one more time without any distractions, but it is real important to have that understanding of the unit circle and how to apply the cast rule so that you can start solving some problems. So in the next video, we will be working on some examples, and this should actually help you hopefully reinforce that understanding on the unit circle and the cast rule.